So Stonehenge was much more than some ancient stargazing site. It also appears to be a massive graveyard. The connection between the two functions has remained elusive, but in recent years, the magic of technology has helped experts crack the code. English Heritage, which maintains the site, has been working on the most detailed scans of the monument ever conducted. The team behind the tech is here today. This is Stephen Hey, and Stephen. Antonio. Hi. Antonio, nice to meet you, Josh. Hi. Antonio. How are you? Pleasure to meet you. They've been using 3D scanners that shower the area with lasers, mapping and measuring every detail of the landscape down to fractions of a millimeter. Some are mounted on tripods, but others, like the Leica Pegasus backpack, are a bit more mobile. That's a Dalek from Doctor Who, correct? Correct, yes. Wearable Dalek. What is this thing? <laughs> it's a mobile mapping unit. Do you want to have a go? Oh, for sure. I'd love okay. to. This is the coolest backpack I've ever seen. So if I were to break this, what is the value of this thing I'm wearing? It's about $200,000. Well, it sounded a lot like you said $200,000. I did indeed. This is literally worth more than everything that I own. <laughs> I walk through the monument with the laser scanner. Talk about doing work on the go. This thing has 32 individual lasers on board that are capable of capturing half a million data points every second. And the onboard cameras are able to see every single time I take a step, generating 25 megs of data every meter that I walk forward. In other words, this thing is able to see everything. In the most recent rounds of scans, English Heritage generated an incredible 850 gigabytes of data, which has started to settle long simmering debates about the site's original function. So how do you narrow this down? How do you figure out which tall tree? 35 years of landscaping means new trees have been planted, and trees that were here in the 80s are gone. Finding the final marker is not going to be easy. No pun intended, I'm stumped. And for that, we have a secret weapon. You have a secret weapon? Secret weapon. Oh, I like secret weapons. <laughs> Josh, I want to introduce you to Steve and Sean from GeoView. How are you, man? Nice Here to meet you. Nice to meet you. Sean? Too, Sean? Nice to meet you. I like the look of this. This is GPR, yeah? Yes, this is ground penetrating radar. Ground penetrating radar, GPR, is very good at picking up uh, electrical contrast in the soil. So if somebody dug down here and buried something and filled it in, this unit can see that? It can see soil disturbances, yes. OK, so what's the move? What do we do? We just start walking. So you want to take the rings? Oh, please. Are you kidding? I'd love to. Here we go. I'm going to do All my right. best not to break this. Start walking. Purists may consider GPR an unfair advantage, but three decades have passed and the final clue is tied to a tree we can't trace. We're all out of options. We, we pass that tree, we start seeing these isolated parabolas right. at various steps. So we're looking for signals like this? Yes. Could be rocks, it could be shells. It, it could be... be a treasure box. Absolutely. Trying to stay positive here. All right, let's do it. Gosh, I think Ooh, whoa, whoa, right whoa, there. Whoa. What ah. is that? That looks like a small object, yeah? Look at the soil disturbance around. It's where someone could have dug an actual hole. Let's mark it. Let's definitely mark, mark it. that. I'm not going to get ahead of myself. That could be anything. That's a rock. That could be a rock. We're not going to get excited. <laughs> because the GPR can't tell us what's down there, we're marking all the hits. There's another oh, one. Oh, right oh, there. Look, another look. one. Wow. Another flag. Here we go. All right. We'll go back and dig the most promising. All right, let's keep pushing. Come on. Let's get some more. Here we go. Something right there. Let's mark it. Oh, mark it, yes. Wow. What wow. is that? What is that? That, that looks like it could be an object, yes? Right about two, two and a half feet down. Wow. Two and a half feet down. Oh my god. And that's about how deep was the Cleveland box? Exactly the same. Really? Exactly yeah. the same. Awesome. I think that's a buried object. That Absolutely. Could be it. Let's not plant a flag. Let's actually just check this one out. We have our strongest reading in the corner where the green fence hits the bending branches. It matches the verse perfectly. The treasure box could be right here. Next step would be uh, Sean to come in and probe it. Let's do it. Oh, oh, oh. Are you hitting something? Yes, I got something here. You can feel that one. Feel that one right there. Get out of town. So oh, there's something there. On. Definitely something, something there. there. <laughs> 
<laughs> There's something there. Okay, and should we check around it? Yeah. So that is. Is that one's coming out? Wow. This side of it here. Oh again. my. I mean, you can hear it. That may be my heart. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi, yeah. Josh, nice oh, to yeah. meet you. This looks crazy. It's not too crazy. What is this? This is a resistivity meter. Oh, of course. That's yeah. what I was going to say, a resistivity meter. You know, for those who don't know exactly what a resistivity meter is, how does it work? All it does is measure resistance. So you Got put it. a current into the ground, and it measures the resistance to that current. Say, the bank of our hinge, if there's one underneath, that'll be high resistance. Got it. You can have a go if you like. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, I would love to. OK. <laughs> so all you have to do is press start. It takes a reading, lift it up. OK. That's it. Put it in by the meter mark on the tape. There's your next reading. Great. You do it again. OK. So just every meter. OK. That's it. It's done. You've done the line. So now we go have a pint? No. No. Do the rest of the square, I'm We afraid. go back the other way. We do. Wait, are we doing the whole field? Yeah. Oh, this suddenly got a lot less fun. <laughs> ben has marked out the test path with a measuring tape so I don't take this resistivity meter too far astray. Though I'm not sure how much trouble I can get into looking like an old man with a tricked out walker. OK, so, moment of truth. Lighter gray, high resistance. So if we've got a light gray area, that should be the hinge bank. Got it. The results are in, and they are typically Welsh. In other words, hard for me to read. But to Saren and Ben, this pixelated image is as clear as day. What's that? That in there is a lighter gray area right where the hinge bank should be. Is that a hinge? I'm at a Stone Age tomb in northern Wales using state-of-the-art geophysics technology to determine if this monument was once surrounded by a henge. That in there is a lighter gray area right where the hinge bank should be. Is that a henge? Yeah. Yeah, that's a It doesn't look like much, but it is. <laughs> 10 gray pixels. That looks like it's confirming your theory. 